In this Revit gameplay tutorial, I will be showing you how to model this really cool floating A-frame house in Revit. We will be highlighting how to model the structure, uh, how can you adjust the complex curtain wall in the front, how to model these cool stairs, and then finally how to adjust the site. Also, I will be answering the most important question, and that is where can you get that really cool super realistic car family for Revit? Now, before we jump into Revit, I would just quickly like to ask you to check out BalkanArctic.com. I'm going to link it up just below this video in the description and then also up in the cards above. There you can find all of my Revit courses where I take the extra time to go slowly, step by step and explain all of the complex topics in Revit. Revit. Uh, also there, we'll now answer the question about the car family. You can find numerous really high quality, highly realistic Revit families. You can find these really cool car families, but we also have furniture, uh, greenery, so trees, bushes, and so on. We have some uh, cool doors, windows, so make sure to check that out. Okay, so now without any further ado, let's jump straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit, and as you can see, I have already prepared this file, so we have a couple of levels here, so level 1, level 2, level 3. Uh, on level 2, which is kind of the ground level of this floating A-frame house, we just have this floor, so we're just going to be starting from there. So to build an A-frame house or cabin, you need to start with a roof, because that's that's kind of the, the main part. So what I'll do is I'm just going to jump in here into level 2, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and then let's go here to architecture, and then let's go to roof, and I'm just going to be using a simple rectangle and just start from here and then stop kind of shy of the end. Hit the escape key a couple of times. Then you want to select the horizontal lines and uncheck the fines slope. So the slope will only be defined here on the side. Then you want to select the ones on the side and change the slope from 30 all the way to 60 degrees. Then you can hit apply and this is what we get. Now I'll just go here and let's me, let me just readjust this and then here I'll set this to 120 centimeters. So here for the kind of the, the front of it, it's just going to be 120. Okay, so once we have this in place, I can go back now to the 3D view and let's hit finish and this is what's going to happen. Now, I don't like this just because these edges here don't look right. It's obviously not going to look like this in real life. So what you need to do is you need to select that roof and then here for the construction in the properties panel, we have this rafter cut option. So currently it's set to plum cut. You can just set it to uh, plum, so two cuts plum. So that will do this, or you have the option to, to cut square, which is just going to do the same thing. Uh, but here, when you set up the fascia depth, it's just going to do kind of a, a, a little different job. So here, if I set this to 20, hit apply, it's just going to go down like this, for example. So I don't really want that, so I'm just going to set that to zero. And now we have a flat bottom of this roof, but it's kind of up in the air. So what you want to do next is just select that, go to one of the elevations. I prefer the south elevation here. And then what you'll do is just go to the move tool and zoom in, click anywhere here on the bottom, like here, and then you move it down until it snaps kind of vertically on top of this floor. Once we have that done, we can go back to our 3D view. And then here, let's now continue. So the next step is going to be the curtain wall in the front. So for the curtain wall, we want to go to our level two. We want to go here to walls and then let's pick out here a curtain wall. So you just want to scroll down and find the storefront curtain wall. Click on that. And now here, what you want to do is make sure that you have this set to wireframe. If you set it to hidden line, it's going to look like this. And the problem is, you don't really see where the inner edge of this roof starts. When you set that to wireframe, essentially you can now see this line here or this position here. So if I go back to my level two, now I can just come in here and I just like to be kind of a little bit on the inside, go all the way across and then just hit the space key once to flip it to the other side. And there we go, hit the escape key a few times and this is what we get. Uh, now, in this case, if I select this and go into edit type, you'll notice that the layout has been set to none. 
uh, both horizontal and vertical. And I just set it to this just because it's going to make it easier in this case, uh, just simpler, simply to start from kind of scratch and then build it. So let me see, let me show you how that works. But if you just want to have like a blank uh, curtain wall like this, you just need to make sure that the layouts are set to none. Click OK. And here, I think this is set to kind of a weird height. So let's set it to something a bit higher. Uh, but still, that doesn't really matter because we're going to go here to attach top base. Click on the roof. And now it's going to attach it up. So let's just delete these elements. And now we have that perfect curtain wall. Now, at the moment, this is just one big plane of glass. So now we have to kind of divide it. So the next step is going to be to come here and uh, let's go to our curtain grid tool, go to all segments and then you just come in here and I'm just going to place a segment, see how it snaps to level two and just click. So now we have one on level two. Now we want to place one below that. So let's go like this. Let's go at uh, 30 centimeters below that. So we have another one. Then I want to have a vertical segment. So what I'll do is I'll do one segment and then I'll just place it here vertically, just like that. And in this case, I was really lucky because I've managed to hit the center. If you don't hit center, just make sure to adjust it. Hit the escape key a few times. Now here, I don't like this connection. So I'm just going to select this and click on this little button. See that appears this. And now it's just going to be above. So it looks a lot more kind of cleaner. Next, I'm just going to cover over the window here in the middle, hit the tab key once or twice until it highlights the actual window. Then you want to select it. You want to unpin it. And then here in the properties, you want to change that to solid. And now here we have a solid panel there. And then finally for the door, uh, what you want to do is you just want to go here to curtain grid, one segment, place one segment there. And let's go 40, 50, let's see. So it's actually measuring from this vertical one. So let's see, let's try, can I zoom in and see? Okay, let's do 50 on each side. So this should be 50 as well, perfect. So now this door is 100 centimeters wide. Hit the escape key a few times. Uh, you wanna select these ones on the bottom. So hold the control key unpin them and then just hit delete because we don't want them and you want the door to go to the bottom. Now we're going to be selecting this door. So what you need to do is you need to hit the tab key once or twice to highlight the door and then you click to select, unpin it. And then here in the properties panel, I'm just going to change that to uh, this uh, curtain wall door and it's going to look like that. So now we have a really nice looking curtain wall here in the front. Okay, so for the next step and kind of the, the most interesting part of this cabin or A-frame house is the actual framing. So let's see how we can do that. How can we add the beams? So what I'm going to do now is I'm simply going to go here to systems uh, or sorry, structure uh, and then go to beam system. And then here for this beam system, what you wanna do first is set the work plane. So what I like to do is I like to set this to pick a plane click OK. And then I like to host it to the this interior edge of the uh, interior edge of the uh, uh, of the a frame uh, uh, roof. So then once you do that, you then go to pick lines, and then you can pick out this line here, this line here, the one on the other side, and then finally, you can pick out any line here that you want on the bottom. So once you have actually picked out the lines, it's not as simple as just stopping there. You do have to uh, now go to trim and extend to corner, fix this up here, 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 and here. Hit the escape you a few times. You wanna make sure that uh, this line, so the one that has these two on the sides, that's kind of the beam direction. So in which direction the beams are going and you wanna make sure it's vertical. If it's horizontal, uh, you can just go here to beam direction and then uh, just place a horizontal line like so, or you can just use uh, this pick lines and then pick out one of these. Okay, so once we have that in place, then you want to select this one here on top and just extend it a little bit up. So just like that, nothing, nothing crazy. Okay, then the one on the bottom, then there you just want to be a little bit crazy. So you just want to extend it down 
let's see let's go up to here I think that's fine and let's just leave it at that and we can just hit finish so what it will do here is it will place the beams currently have this one loaded in so the M timber 140 by 235 I'm happy with that one I just want to change the spacing to 80 centimeters hit apply so it's going to look like this and that looks perfect now we do have a problem the beams are on the inside and I actually want them to go to the through the actual roof itself uh, now there are many different ways you can approach this what I prefer to do is just kind of find uh, a way where I can kind of look at this from the front uh, zoom in make a selection of just the beams so in, if you don't want to select the beam system make a, a selection like this but don't go all the way through because the beam system is kind of hosted on the edge so you just want to make sure you select like this so now we only have those nine structural beams and then here you can go and set the uh, Z justification from top to bottom and then you just want to give it like a two centimeter value just so it goes kind of inside that roof and there we go so now it's on the inside then you just want to select the whole thing so you just kind of hover over the edge and it's going to highlight like that select it go to the site plan and then in the site plan you simply want to use the mirror uh, tool so mirror pick access and just pick this uh, oops, uh, a line in the middle like that and then when you go to the 3d view it should be like this and we have that kind of a-frame uh, uh, hovering a-frame house look now now here in this case the, the 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 one on this side is actually a bit lower so I'm just going to go here to edit boundary and then just extend that a bit further so it can look like that so there we go so now we have the framing and uh, we have the uh, we have the curtain wall and we have the uh, the roof now the next step is going to be to model uh, both the site and the stairs now these two kind of go together because uh, the stair is kind of hosted on the site and it uses site so let me show you how we'll do that so first I'll model one part of the site so if I just go here to the site plan uh, here this is set to under uh, wireframe let me just set it to hit a line perfect okay so here what you want to do is I want to add that wall so let's go here to the wall tool I'm just going to be using the uh, exterior wall here okay uh, and then what I'll do is I'll set it to exterior wall brick and then I'm going to come from here gonna find this position somewhere over there perfect go underneath the house and then go out like this okay so once we have that wall you'll see I've already set it before to 51 unconnected so basically if this is just set to level 2 or something like that if it's tall you just set it to unconnected and then you set it to that magic number which is 51 now you might be thinking well why is 51 the magic number well because 51 is three heights off kind of an average stair so the average stair is 17 centimeters height uh, so 51 is three times that so this is actually three steps tall and we are going to be using that now here also this the bricks are on the outside so I actually want them to face inside so let's go back to our site plan and just flip this here here and here so now it's flipped and now in the 3d view yeah it looks much better okay so once we have this in place now we can start the stair from the top of this wall so what I'll do then is I'm simply going to go to uh, the stair should be from level 1 up to level 2 so let's go here to level 1 and uh, because I have set some uh, underlay settings I can see the house above I can set this to fine so now I can see even the beams if I want uh, so anyways for the stair uh, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to go here to the stair tool and then here we have our stairs so here I have this modern floating stair which I'm going to use and if you want to have this whole template which I'm using which is going to have all of these important parts just to kind of complete this project well you can find that on my website I have two architecture templates and we have one structural template so if you want to check that out I'm going to link it just below this video in the description and then also up in the cards above okay now let's go back to the stair so here what you want to do is you want to set the stair to go have the base level at level 1 top level at level 2 but give it a base offset of 51 because we're going to start the stair from that wall so once you have that you just go simply here to run you uh, click 
you extend. Now here it's going to report how many you have created and remaining. So this is six or six created five remaining. That's good. You can go to the other side and then you finish it like that. Hit the escape key a few times. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a look here and see. So uh, I'm going to have a wall here, which is going to be actually holding the stair. So for now, uh, let's just have this stair like that. And I'm just going to bring it in. So here, this is where that wall is going to go. So I'm just going to bring the stair in closer like that. And I, I think I'm just going to leave it here as is. Uh, now let's go to the 3D view. So this is where the stair is right now. And then I can hit finish. There we go. So that looks okay. So now let's actually add the host for the stair because that's going to help us a lot. So, uh, and there's a little bit of back and forth here and that's just how it is when it comes to modeling these types of projects. Uh, so now you wanna go to, I think that's level one. Yep. Uh, and then go to wall. And then this is just going to be our uh, interior bearing wall, I think. Or no, let's just go with the interior wall. Uh, and then for the height, let's go up to level two, but actually I'm just going to give it a top offset of 90 centimeters because it's going to act in as railing. So let's hit apply and then come from here. Actually, let's set this to wall uh, finish face exterior and flip to the other side and place it here and then hit the escape key a few times. Okay, now I can select the stair, go into edit stair and then I can just kind of move this there to kind of snap it there to that wall. So once we have all of this in place, now I can hit finish. I can select both the stair, hold the control key, select the wall, and then I can move both of them from here to here. So it kind of lines up properly with the house. So when I now go to the 3D view, this is what that's going to look like. So as you can see, it looks really, really good. Uh, and then of course you can join these together by going to the modify tab and going to join geometry. Let's see, join geometry. And then you can join these two together. If you don't like this join order, you can switch it. So you can flip to be this. I prefer this option. And there we go. So now we have that elegant stair. Now, obviously you still have to get to this wall, which is tall, it's 51 centimeters. So we wanna go back now down to level one. We wanna go again to architecture, again to stair. And then here, let's use a uh, monolithic stair. Uh, now, if you're wondering why the stair doesn't have railing, it's because here I've disabled railing. So I've set this to none. Uh, of course, you can pick out any railing that you want. In this case, I don't want it. So anyways, here uh, we just set this from level one up to none, and then desired stair height is 51. Click apply, and you just click, extend, and there we go. So we have that stair, and now it's just a matter of fitting it in the correct place. Hit finish, go to the 3D view, and now it looks like this. So you have that concrete stair on the bottom, and then floating stair up here. And it looks beautiful if you ask me. Okay, so now once we have all of that in place, uh, obviously we can place railing here. I'm just going to skip that step because it's, uh, I, I think it's simple enough. Uh, but now let's model the site. I think that's kind of the, the final important thing that uh, we should cover. So for the site, what I'll do is here, I'm just going to bring this wall a little bit towards the inside like that, perhaps a bit further as well. Then go into edit profile. And then here, what you wanna do is just have a line going from kind of here down to here. Hit the escape key a few times. And then you just wanna use trim and extend to corner from here to here. And then select this and hit delete. Okay, so now once we have that, let's hit finish. And now we have that wall that kind of disappears. And now we want to have the site kind of completely fit into this project or have the project fit into the site, but we've already done the project. So let's now do the site. So what you wanna do is, uh, let's bring this in as well, just a little bit. I don't want too much site here and perhaps bring this here a lot more. Okay, perfect. Okay, so you wanna go to the site plan. Uh, then uh, in the site plan, now you want to go to obviously massing and site, topo surface, place points, and set the elevation here to zero first. And then you set a set of points here, just like that. 
Okay, so now we want to set a set of points here following the inner edge of this wall. So just like that. Now here you can see that wall. So what they'll do there is let me just finish the other ones like that. And you can even put one here. Okay, so here for the this kind of inner side, you can perhaps find it, but no. So you can just switch this to wireframe and then you will see that wall and then you can place those additional points that you want to place. Okay, so once we have all of these points in place, uh, then uh, what you want to do is you want to switch the elevation to 51 is the height of the wall, and then I actually want it to be a bit lower, so uh, it's not like perfectly aligned. The, I don't want the site, the grass, to be perfectly aligned with the top of the wall. So I'll just go a little bit below that, so let's go with 46. Okay, so now you can come in here, and place one point here, one point here, one point here, 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 and then you can just, I like to have one kind of opposite of each of the points there, and just like that, have a few here, 46, and now they should actually be going down. So let's do one at 40 here, perhaps, then we can do one at 30 here, then we can do one at 20, here, one at 10, here, and then we can do zero already over here. And then uh, I'm just going to place one at zero here, and then one at 30, I don't know, here, and then one at 46, which is kind of our highest point here. Uh, and now I'm just going to kind of move them about just a little bit here to have something that looks like that. Now here you can see we have some sort of an issue. So if I go to the 3D view, you'll see how the terrain starts to rise here. So we can fix that by adding additional points. So if I just go back to the site plan, so here we have some points missing. So if I just set this to zero and place one point here, that fixes it, see? Now it looks elegant. Now we also wanna take a look at this. So here on this side, it looks all right, but I think this one should be brought down to five. And then this one here should be, I don't know, 15. Okay. And the rest of them look all, all right. So there we go. Now we have that type of a site where it's kind of uh, using that wall as kind of a barrier or something like that. So now I can just hit finish and we have that beautiful site. Now, if you want the beams to go straight into the site, you can just go to edit boundary and just have them go all the way down here. Hit finish, select this side, edit boundary and just have it go down further like that. And there we go. That's how we uh, modeled this house. And with a, a little more editing, this is what we get in the end. So we have that cool car family, we have the, the, the house, we have the railing, everything is there. So as I said, if you want to check out the, uh, the car families, I'm going to link up that in the cards above. And then of course, if you want to get this Revit project file or any of my other Revit project files, you can find them on my Patreon page, which I'm going to link up just below this video in the description and then also up in the cards above. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content, uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos, and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.